All right, thank you for staying with us. One of the most piercing problems Nigeria faces is insecurity, which not just affects the citizens, but the growth and development of a country. But our hope is not lost, as security officials continue to make arrests of persons causing violence in the country. Just recently, the Nigerian Defense Headquarters arrested a leader of Islamic State for West Africa province, ISWAP terrorist group. The statement was made by the Director of Defense Media Operations, Major General Edward Buba, who also said the arrest of the ISWAP leader was part of troops' effort at court, targeting the leadership of terrorist groups to ensure they pose no further threat to the safety and security of citizens, end quote. Your father said ongoing military operations across the country have continued to decimate the fighting force of terrorists and other criminal elements and reduce their fighting capacity. Joining us in the studio is a certified master anti-terrorism specialist, Dixon Osage. Good morning. Thank, Thank you, you for joining us. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Now, uh, it's some say this is a welcome development. Good news. Uh, good news uh, as it is. But how much impact would this really make? Because if you look at the statement coming from the defense headquarters, uh, this they are gunning for the leaders of this group because um, so as to ensure that um, lives and property perhaps are secured. Let me just summarize it that way. Well, I said good news because uh, most times uh, we try to, you know, engage terrorism from the surface. Uh, we don't look at uh, uh, the leaders, the sponsors, uh, because terrorism is expensive, very expensive to, uh, to, to delve into. I'm talking about the motivations, the financial uh, implication of terrorism, and uh, it's a multifaceted approach, if you ask me, if you want to engage in a counter insurgency. Uh, the military, you know, are, are doing so well, and I'm really impressed uh, uh, with the collaboration uh, they had with the uh, DSS. Mm -hmm. uh, the DSS is one of the most respected intelligence agents we have in Nigeria, and I believe they have the capability to, you know, uh, collaborate with the military, you know, to engage the military, uh, you know, uh, service the military with intelligence-driven uh, operations. Uh, just like a few years ago when al-Baghdadi was uh, eliminated by the U.S. troops, uh, it demoralized the uh, fighting force of the uh, ISIS members in, uh, uh, in, in the Western world. So for me, if you go after leaders of terrorism, what you are doing is that you are dismantling uh, the structure. Do they will try to, you know, regroup. reappoint, yeah, regroup, reappoint a new leader. But at that moment, when you hit on the leaders, you don't give them time to regroup. You have to go hard. I don't want the military to relax or the DSS to relax and, you know, have some drink thinking uh, they've uh, done so well and uh, terrorism is over. Uh, terrorism is an ideological driven war and any ideological driven war, uh, Vera, I tell you, could last till eternity. Mm. And we've seen the military uh, also went on to say that these um, leaders, these ISWAP leaders and the likes have also they have been on the run. Uh, they are, might have you know, considerably lessened due to the onslaught by the military. But a, an area of concern is that this particular case now, the leader was found in a state as Bauchi that, you know, so to speak, has not, you know, really been, has not really suffered, unlike states in the Northeast and Northeast, the like. Yeah. There's also the renewed attention, so to speak, in Niger State, where okay. a number of terrorist leaders have also been found. Okay. I just wonder what, how, how this will increase the war against terrorism, because these are states that are relatively safe, but now all of a sudden they are in the news uh, for the wrong reasons. Are we, how will the military now ensure that this will not become hotbeds uh, for terrorism away from the attention on the Northeast? Fantastic question, Kemi. You see, uh, in terrorism management, uh, if you fail to plan, you are planning to fail. Uh, the military, uh, for me, uh, this was not about the military. Uh, Counterinsurgency is not a one-way coin. It's a multi-dimensional uh, approach. Uh, the military has a role to play. Uh, politicians has a role to play. The public has a, role to play, uh, has a role to play. The people has a role to play. Because if you ask me, why will a Nigeria want to put his life on the line for, 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 for evil acts? Or why will anyone want to engage into terrorism in exception of their ideological factors or their belief? Uh, many factors, you know, uh, comes to play. We're talking about the poverty factors, you know, because sometimes if you, that, that's what we need to start looking at parenting, sufficient parenting. Uh, most of us that you see on air talking or some people that are privileged uh, not to dwell into crime, if you check the background, 
you find out that there is a sufficient parenting, you know, from father and mother, or mother or father, whatever the case may be, but sufficient parenting is very important uh, here in our own climate. That's why sometimes if you think you want to just start engaging people in terrorist acts, killing them, you will keep on killing. That is not the uh, foundational factors. What you need to do is to look at what uh, led to this uh, act. What are the causative factors? Why are people, you know, uh, delving into uh, terrorism? Uh, I always say that, you know, a, pot a, a child on the street uh, is a potential threat to the state, to the government. So we need to start looking at children on the street. We need to start looking at those that are, uh, that are not educated. Education plays a very big role. Unemployment as well uh, plays, a, plays a very big role because suffering, when someone goes through suffering, I must tell you that suffering uh, weakens the sense of reasoning. Most people that, uh, you know, have good reasoning about the Nigerian state, once they engage into suffering or when, once they start suffering from maybe financial suffering or from social factors, you know, it weakens their sense of reasoning. So going back to the uh, uh, Bauchi and the uh, Ninja State you're talking about that, you know, is springing up, you know, these states are, Ninja State, for example, is one of the largest states in Nigeria. What's about 76,000 square kilometers? Let me say it, about 30 the size of Lagos State. So what people, uh, state governments used to start looking at is, hey, it's happening in uh, Medjugorje. How do we protect ourselves from this incident not happening? Most of our governors, you know, went to bed and just keep on, you know, putting eyes in the northeast, Meduguri, Adamawa, and other states. They failed to plan, you know, for uh, for this uh, imminent threat. You know, uh, there's a, a quote by Sir uh, It says, "When disasters strike, the time to plan has passed." So most times, uh, what we are doing right now in most of our states is that we are planning after disaster. So it will be fine if only we have a military approach, political approach as well. But, but is there much state governors could have done knowing that they do not control the security apparatus as it is? It is controlled from the center. Mm -hmm. You see, why did they call themselves chief security officer then, if you ask me this question? For yeah. me, I don't believe state governors are chief security officers. I, I see that as an impersonation. That's from my own personal uh, perspective. A security business is not for everyone. You understand? That's why people say people keep saying security is everyone's business. It's not everyone's business. It's it's everyone consigned, but not everyone's business. It's my business. It's not your business. Media is your business. So state governors, why I uh, why I'm trying to call them to order because they were uh, they were elected into power to take care of the states. Are you with me? So that is where strategic planning comes to play. You know, uh, if you don't have a strategic plan, because people just take out security plan when coming into power, you don't take out security plan. You need to put a security plan in place so that the people will not suffer from uh, insecurity. Because let me tell you, if anyone or any person live in a state of fear, Security has been defeated already, Vera. Security has been defeated. So for me, uh, we need a political will to fight this uh, spirit of terrorism. Sponsorship. Well, in, when, in pushing that conversation further, yeah. what do you think governors could have done, the state governors, and perhaps they could borrow a leaf from the statements you're making to ensure they secure their states, and it's not a matter of they failing to plan as it is? If you go to the hospital, for example, uh, the first thing the doctor do, do is to examine you, uh, ask you what the problem is. You know, what state governors should be doing, first of all, is to carry out a risk assessment of their state, risk and vulnerability assessment of their state. You can't prefer solution to what you don't know what the problem is. So when you carry out most of this assessment, what you need to also do is to check where this threat is coming from. Terrorism, for example, is a global crime. Mm -hmm. and uh, people are uh, coming into terrorism now. It's been uh, uh, commercialized, you know. Uh, a lot of people just feel that, oh, we can make more money from terrorism. Uh, we can pick somebody. Kidnapping is also on the high rise as well because most Nigerians cannot even travel from point A to point B without being uh, accosted by criminal elements on our highways. So what state government needs to tell is, first of all, identify the problem. You can't prefer solution without, without, without identifying the problem. When you identify the problem, then that is where we apply problem-oriented policing. You know, we see policing as just policing. Policing is strategic. Policing is, uh, is, is multifaceted. So we need to start looking at problem-oriented policing. We need to start looking at situational crime prevention. Because one thing uh, I will tell you is that these criminals, why they keep on flourishing, one, is because our criminal justice system is also weak. You know, uh, I, sometimes last week or so, I think there was a, a complaint from defense quarters that some prisoners were released by, is it by the court or? Yes, no. right, by the judiciary. By the, by, judiciary. by the judiciary. And then they talked about the correctional centers also where they were saying that uh, the 
what are those working there were also in collaboration with some of those very good to do for the thing. military to have come out to say such a thing such a, such a thing i think uh just an irony of truth because the military just just come and speak or say anything I, i'm once in the so military so i understand when they say something like that they've gotten a very concrete information so that tells you that our correctional facility needs to be visited the president needs to overhaul our national uh, correctional facilities vera most people that goes to the prison come out more hardy of a criminal. The essence of correctional facilities to rehabilitate someone into the society, then we accept a uh, such person. Because the only essence of uh, punishment is not to destroy in exception of treasonable offense or whereby you are punished or sentenced to death by hanging. But most people go to the prison, come back more hardened. The guys that are tried that are, that killed three police escorts and three uh, 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 staff of Apostle Johnson Suleiman were once in the prison. They were released because they said there was no facts. And when they came back from prison, they, you know, established a ten-man gang, and before you know it, they became a threat to society. So we need to start looking at our prison, uh, correctional facilities as well, to so ensure that people don't go into prison, come back more hard enough. Especially in the Nigerian setting, where at least 70% of the inmates are even awaiting, uh, awaiting trial. trial. Are people who are awaiting trial. Mm -hmm. And in this case, now this latest arrest of a, an ISWAP leader, now naturally, the next big thing would be for them to do their investigation. Apparently, one would expect that they've done the investigation to uh, narrow down on him. He's been arrested now, possibly transfer him, or expectedly transfer him uh, to is it the police now, 